Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about the action potential and how it propagates down the axon. Okay? We're not in this video going to talk about decremental conduction or anything like that, the myelin sheaths. We're really just going to get the basic idea of what's happening in the action potential. So in the previous video, we left off uh, talking about the threshold of excitation and graded potentials. And we mentioned that graded potentials had to be added together, particularly EPSPs, and the EPSPs are really just generating positive charges inside the cell, that is the cell body, and the dendrites of the neuron. And if you add these positive charges together, that is the EPSPs, and the voltage of the cell gets to be about negative 55 millivolts, that's positive enough to initiate an action potential going down the axon. Now, this negative 55 millivolts is a really good number to know. It's the threshold of excitation. And overall, if you get enough positive charges inside here to where you get to this threshold of excitation, negative 55 millivolts, then you get an action potential going along the axon. If you don't get to negative 55, if you're, let's say, at negative 60, even negative 56 millivolts, nothing happens. But if you get to negative 55, you get an action potential. And there's actually a region of the axon right here at the initial part, kind of at the junction between the cell body and the axon itself, called the axon hillock. And it's actually the axon hillock that's actually going to generate the action potential. Okay, And then that's going to propagate unidirectionally down the axon. And so that's a big difference between the action potential and the graded potential. The action potential only occurs in the axon, and it occurs in one direction going from the cell body down the axon to the axon terminals. Okay? It will never go the reverse direction. It always goes in one direction. It is always the same strength. You can't have a partial action potential or a weak one or a strong one. It's always the same strength going down the axon. It's an all or none phenomenon. Okay? And before we get into the whole mechanics of it right here, let's actually look at the graph of the action potential and figure out what's happening. Okay? This graph is sometimes confusing about what it's representing. Okay? We can talk about depolarization, repolarization, hyperpolarization, all that stuff. Okay? But really the gist of this is that this graph is a measurement of what's going on in one tiny isolated spot on the axon. In other words, this process is going to happen over and over and over and over again down the axon. This is not a representation of the whole axon. This is just one tiny spot on it. Okay? So if we look at this axon right here, what we can see is these little action potential graphs right here, these little curves, and it's occurring over and over again down the length of the axon. So each one of these is really just representing one tiny spot on the axon. Okay? And there's really two principal ions and ion channels involved. And those are the voltage-gated sodium channels, which control sodium, and voltage-gated potassium channels, which control potassium. Okay? And so what we're just looking at when we look at this action potential graph is really just one tiny little segment. Okay? But let's look at the graph and see what's happening at that segment. Okay? So first of all, we have to get to this threshold. We talked about that. This initial part is really just the graded potentials. Okay? Notice these right here are failed initiations because they're not getting up to negative 55. Maybe this one's getting to like negative 60, but it's not positive enough inside the soma. But once we get to negative 55, then we get a really rapid depolarization in the axon. Okay? So here's what happens. Initially, what's going to happen is sodium ions are going to rush into the cytoplasm of the axon, which we often call the axoplasm. Okay? It's a cytoplasm inside the axon. So sodium ions rush in. And if sodium ions are moving into the cell, the inside of the cells are going to become more positive okay? because sodium is a positively charged ion. And this occurs very fast and very uh, heavily, and that's why this is a very steep curve. And notice in that one segment that this is representing, we go all the way from negative 55 millivolts up to like positive 30 or 40. Okay? And then we get to this peak. And this rise in the membrane potential to about positive 30 is due to sodium influx through the voltage-gated sodium channels. But you see this peak right here. And around the peak, 
the sodium channels are going to close and now we're going to have the opening of voltage gated potassium channels. So remember potassium is concentrated inside the cell and so if potassium channels open potassium will efflux and that will actually make the inside of the cell more negative. So now you have a rapid repolarization back to negative 70, okay? And that's due to the opening of voltage-gated potassium channels. So potassium ions move out or efflux, and you get a rapid repolarization. So depolarization going up to positive 30 is sodium influx. Repolarization back to negative 70 is due to potassium efflux. And the potassium ions kind of still keep moving out, so they actually end up hyperpolarizing the membrane a little bit more. We end up going a little bit past negative 70. This is actually a little bit exaggerated here. It's not that much past negative 70. But the point is they do overshoot, so there is a little bit of hyperpolarization here. But the major thing I want you to focus on is really the depolarization that's due to the sodium ions and the repolarization that's due to the potassium ions. Yes, there's some hyperpolarization where it overshoots, but that's not the point, okay? And again, we're looking at the axon here, just one isolated region, but the action potential, which is represented by this graph right here, is happening over and over and over and over again, okay? So let's actually see what's happening along the length of the axon, okay? Remember I said that near the cell body or soma, which is over here, kind of at the junction between the soma and the axon, which is this whole thing right here, there's a region called the axon hillock. Okay, that region is the part that kind of generates the action potential. And the events that go on there are a little bit beyond the scope here, but it suffices to say that we're going to get a buildup of positive charge here inside the initial part of the axon. Okay? And again, this is one side of the membrane, this is the other side of the membrane down here. We'll remove this black thing down here and look at more details in a few minutes. All right, so when we look at this picture, there's something I want to make perfectly clear. We do have voltage-gated potassium channels here. Okay? At first, we're not going to talk about those. We really want to talk about the voltage-gated sodium channels because even though we do have the potassium channels, it's really the depolarizations that are actually activating the next part in sequence. Okay? What we're going to see is that this first voltage-gated sodium channel opens first, which is going to trigger the opening of the second, which will then trigger the opening of the third, and so on and so forth down the length of the axon. Okay? Now, again, remember, this is our soma over here, or cell body. And if you remember, I stated that there's a region here, kind of at the junction between the soma and the axon right here, where uh, you have the action potential initiated. This is called the axon hillock. And the exact events that go on here are a little bit beyond the scope. But it suffices to say that at the axon hillock, when we get to threshold, we get a buildup of positive charges here inside the cytoplasm of the axon or the axoplasm. So we get a bunch of positive charges that build up here. Now, the nice thing about these voltage-gated sodium channels is the inside of them, the intracellular part, it has a voltage sensor. And it's able to sense whenever there's positive charges building up. So these positive charges are kind of sensed by the voltage-gated sodium channel, right? And when these ion channels, which are voltage-gated, when they sense these positive charges, they activate. Okay, and so this little explosion here is representing the fact that they activated. So these positive charges right here build up, voltage-gated sodium channel senses it, and it activates. And when this voltage-gated sodium channel activates, due to these positive charges building up, sodium influxes into the cell, which in this case is the axon. Okay? Sodium ions influx. Right? Now, it's not just going to be one sodium ion. It's actually going to be a lot of sodium ions just in this vicinity. Okay? And so in this vicinity, there's going to be a lot more positive charges that build up. These positive charges right here are actually from this sodium influx. Because, again, it's not one sodium cation. It's a lot of them. And so what you're going to see in this region right here is that depolarization. Right? It's This region right here is depolarized because you're getting positive charge influx, okay, due to the sodium influx here. Now, again, these positive charges right here are going to be sensed by the next voltage-gated sodium channel in this arbitrary region too. And so these charges are going to activate this voltage-gated sodium channel, and voila, this voltage-gated sodium channel opens, right? And more sodium ions influx. And again, 
there's not just one sodium ion, it's a lot of them, and so you've got more positive charges building up in this vicinity. So notice this region right here is going to depolarize, okay? And again, you have more positive charges right here. Again, as you would expect, these positive charges right here are going to be sensed by the next voltage-gated sodium channel. And as you might expect, this voltage-gated sodium channel opens, sodium ions influx, and so on and so forth. You get depolarization right here due to all the positive charges building up. And this process is going to occur all the way down the length of the axon, okay, until you get to the end, which we'll talk about in a future video. Now, one thing I want you to notice is here. Notice that when this initial voltage-gated sodium channel opens, we get that depolarization, right? And we mentioned that those sodium ions that build up inside here lead to the activation of the next voltage-gated sodium channel, as shown right here. And then for the second one, you see this depolarization. Notice for one second that while the second one is depolarizing, the first one is actually repolarizing, okay? This first one doesn't remain open indefinitely. In fact, it'll open for a really short amount of time, and for the most part, this is just a simple way of looking at it, by the time the second one in sequence opens, this one has actually closed, okay? And so, again, you're actually in the process of repolarization there, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then you can follow the same pattern to the third one, okay? This third one activates, and again, kind of by the time this third one is depolarizing, the second one has actually closed, and is that region is in the process of repolarizing. Okay, and again, what causes that repolarization? Well, it's the potassium channels. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back through what I just talked about, but now introduce the potassium channels with it. Because really, the action potential, when we think about it, even though it technically involves both the sodium and potassium channels in the same region, it's more helpful to think about it in terms of consecutive voltage-gated sodium channels opening, which opens the next one, which opens the next one, and so on and so forth. But the action potential would be incomplete in each region if you didn't talk about the potassium channel. Okay? So let's go back and talk about this again, but we're going to introduce this one extra level of complexity. So again, the axon hillock, we want to generate an action potential because we're at threshold. We have a buildup of positive charges here in the vicinity of this first voltage-gated sodium channel. And just like we mentioned before, this voltage-gated sodium channel opens, right? And sodium ions influx, leading to a buildup of positive charges here. Now I mentioned that this second voltage-gated sodium channel actually senses these positive charges, and that's true, it does. But also, the voltage-gated potassium channel right here also senses these charges. And if you go back to this graph, you'll notice that the voltage-gated potassium channels actually tend to open around positive 30 millivolts, okay? Um, and again, the sequence is a little bit um, skewed from this, but this is just a very basic idea. So around the time that this voltage-gated sodium channel opens, you also get the opening of this voltage-gated potassium channel right here, okay? So the voltage-gated potassium channel is actually going to lag behind the corresponding sodium channel. And so notice what's happening in the second region. As we talked about before, sodium ions influx and you get a buildup of positive charges over here. But in the first region, it's in repolarization, and that's because potassium ions are effluxing, bringing the membrane potential back down to negative 70, okay? And also notice the first sodium channel's closed, okay? So what's gonna happen a lot of times is we're gonna have the voltage-gated potassium channel open, and then in the distance somewhere down the axon, we'll have voltage-gated sodium channels open all right, so now the second region is depolarized. We now have a buildup of positive charges over here, okay? We mentioned before that these will be sensed by the third voltage-gated sodium channel, and that's true, okay? We see that activated here, sodium ions influx in the third arbitrary region. But notice back in the second one, we now have potassium efflux, okay? In the previous slide, we notice here that the second region has just become depolarized to about positive 30. That's sufficient to open the voltage-gated potassium channels here, okay? And again, as we see, potassium effluxes and the second region repolarizes, 
And this pattern of these voltage-gated potassium channels kind of lagging behind the sodium channels, this process is going to continue all the way down the length of the axon, like this. Again, the blue ones are sodium, purple ones are pink ones are potassium, and so you'll kind of see something like this. You'll have the initial voltage-gated sodium channel activated, and you'll kind of just see something like this. Right? So hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay? Let's go back and watch that again. It's kind of a stupid animation, but hopefully it gets the point across that all of these are going to activate in sequence and it's just going to progress all the way down the length of that axon. Again, I think that the potassium channels, you have to cover them because they go along with the voltage-gated sodium channels, but they always lag behind the sodium channels. But really the action potential, when we think about the activation of the next region in the sequence, it's really just due to the voltage-gated sodium channels, where you get one activated, sodium influxes, that sodium buildup causes the activation of the next one, sodium influxes, sodium builds up, that causes activation of the next one, and so on and so forth. But remember that when you're talking about the action potential, you're just looking at one little bitty region right here, right? One little bitty region, okay? And then action potential is complete in that region, it moves to the next one and then to the next region, and to the next region, until finally you get all the way down to the end here. And something different is going to happen down at the end of the axon, okay? something that we actually haven't seen at this point. Okay? But we'll cover that in another video. So a quick recap. Make sure you understand two things. One, how the action potential propagates down the axon. It's really just due to consecutive and unidirectional openings of voltage-gated sodium channels in sequence. And then number two, this is happening in one individual region. Opening of voltage-gated sodium channels gets us depolarized to about positive 30. They close, and then you get opening of voltage-gated potassium channels, and you get repolarization down back to resting membrane potential or negative 70. It'll overshoot it a little bit, which is hyperpolarization in this case, and then you'll get back to the resting state. Okay. There's a few other things that we need to tie up here, um, and that actually has to do with the sodium-potassium ATPase. That'll be the next video. And then also what's called decremental conduction. We'll cover that in another video. And then finally, we'll get into the events that actually occur in these terminals of the axons. And it's actually going to involve a different type of voltage-gated channel and ultimately neurotransmitter exocytosis, which kind of then leads us back to this in a second neuron. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.